You're listening to the Bahai World News Service. Now live at local house of worship at the Living God by Bahai. During a conference at the Bahai World Center, groups of continental counselors joined in conversations that were recorded by the Bahai World News Service for a series of podcasts on youth and social transformation, on the advancement of women, and on Bahai moral and spiritual educational programs. In this episode, we hear from counselors Agostino Ibrahim from Tanzania. All human beings are created noble. Bhavna and Barasan from India. They see women can contribute in many ways. Townsend Lihanda from Kenya. They begin to understand what is our true identity. Orlando Ravello from Canary Islands. So the picture is completely changed in this neighborhood through this uh, spirit of collaboration. Evgenia Poluektova from Ukraine. You have this power inside and also working together with other people, this power is multiplying. And Niroshini Saleh from Sri Lanka. Not only the mothers, but the fathers also participated and they had a beautiful consultation. A process of social change often takes root when groups of people gather to explore and apply Baha'i principles in their daily lives. Some of these gatherings are dedicated to collective prayer that infuse a new spirit into the life of a community and enable participants to explore the principle of the equality of women and men. You know, when we sit and we pray together, we uh, talk about uh, the importance of, um, uh, you know, equality, where the soul doesn't have a gender and how every human being is created noble. And every noble soul has, has this aspiration to, to advance. And then together we try to understand what's the best way forward, what options there are. In addition to devotional gatherings, educational programs offered by Baha'i communities around the world welcome everyone who wishes to contribute to the community's prosperity and enable countless women to take increasing responsibility for charting the path of the development of their neighborhoods and villages. So there is one story in Sri Lanka where, uh, where there is a very urbanized neighborhood and there's this one lady, um, initially like uh, she was always with her family. She only thought about her family. She said, my children, my husband and me, I don't want to help anyone or you know think about anyone else in her neighborhood and uh, what happened was the the husband was uh, already in the education process and he kept uh, talking to the youths in, in who was helping with this education process saying i have transformed i have started to pray i have started to see that everyone has a noble soul and I want my wife also to see. So the youth started the conversation with her and she used to run away. She said, no, no, I, I just need to be with my family. I'll cook for my husband and make sure my children, when they come home from school, they are taken care of, that's it. And then she started to see the change of the husband. She thought, okay, let me also go through this education process to see like, okay, they say that every human is created noble. And then let me also see what, why the, he's being changed. So she went through the education process and today she's the mother of the village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She has helped so many, many households in her neighborhood. So there is about 300 households in her neighborhood. Around 170, 180 of them are connected very closely to uh, worship and service. They all understand that we worship, but we also have to serve each other in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And they're all now together assisting each other. And, uh, and this neighborhood is so beautiful. They pray together, they sing together, they serve together, their children and the junior youth. They also do, ser do service together. 
So I mean, the change was uh, with this. Uh, of course, the husband assisted in the change, <laughs> but wow. what I mean is that she was able to gather everyone, talk to everyone about it, and also empower everyone. Mm -hmm. Talking about the empowerment, uh, you know, it's very interesting for me and I think it's across the world when you think about this educational process. And um, like, uh, you know, from Kenya and in many communities, uh, decision making was mm. something that is actually made by man. You know, like yeah. uh, the mother has actually gone to work in the farm and when he comes back, cows are not there. <laughs> the father has actually decided to sell all of them. So the mother mm. is not part of the discussion. But through this participation in the educational process, uh, the mother, the father, and the children, helping them also to advance, then uh, so much is actually learned. And we began to see in some of the villages that you know, at the level of the family now, they will be able to consult. Mm. So the father don't just make a decision. Mm there is consultation, so they consult about it. They make decisions together. Mm -hmm. And you see the families are actually happier. But then as that happens at the level of the community, everybody begins to appreciate the role of women. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Uh, all human beings are created noble and with the talent and capacities. And uh, for these capacities to be manifested, including uh, women, and benefit the society, they need to, education is at the heart of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a number of communities that I have visited and interacted with, you see when women, for instance, um, uh, participate in the spiritual and moral education of children as teachers, their role as mothers, as first educators of their children mm -hmm. and families, mm -hmm. there is so much evidence of the role being improved and uh, one of the account, one of the, the sub-village leader in one of the villages was acknowledging that for quite a long time, women were left behind and uh, it's like the, the village was deprived of their contribution uh, in the advancement of the community. But also that has led to uh, uh, appreciating e women are equal members and contributors yes. of, in the process of transformation of the village. Um, and uh, as a result, you see more appointment of women mm. in the local government uh, uh, leadership and also the appreciation for educating girls is, uh, is, is increasing because of what they see. Women with the literal knowledge they gain in mm -hmm. the... So they appreciate that if they get more education, there's more that they can, they can really yes. do. Now there's a lot of appreciation of how much can be achieved and how much the community can benefit from the contribution of women if they are given opportunities to also uh, take part in the development of their villages. I spoke just um, this morning to a friend from Greece. There is a group of mothers, they um, they were reading some passages from writings together, and one of them was that, I don't know it in English, the bug biting quenches the light of the like, soul. Yes. And they, it was funny that they decided that they're going to support each other to avoid bug biting. Mm -hmm. And they would be so proud, like coming next day to say, like, oh, I, this, my neighbor was saying something and I didn't say it back. So, just to see that also, it's a very small thing, yes. but how much it also changes the relationship. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and not only that, okay, it's, you don't focus on faults of other person, but also then they have then time and <laughs> space to talk about things that they mm -hmm. actually can do together. And this is very interesting that, um, because you talked about service, this idea of like everybody uh, making a contribution, that um, this just gives so much power to people. Mm. Because if somebody, I'm gonna cry because 
Because if somebody thinks like they cannot do anything, this is the definition of helplessness. No? So to me, this idea that you have the capacities to contribute, this is the, that, that is true empowerment. It's not just giving a, like, uh, a possibility to vote, which we have, a possibility to go to have education, which we also have access to, but the possibility to, to actually make a contribution to, to society. Yeah. You know, so this year I spoke to so many, to so many like refugees. And this is interesting to see that You know, when you have to leave your country and then you go to a place, you don't know the language, you don't know nobody. And there's a lot of people say that they really feel like um, they are nothing, you know. There's a lot of people say, I was, I had something in my home country and now, and of course the reason they left, because they were looking for safety for themselves and for their children. And myself also, I got out of Ukraine. A year ago and then uh, one person said that when you do something for others the horror disappears and for them to see that actually Everybody, like NGOs, government, they look at you like you have needs. You need, yes. we need to provide for you. Yes. And very few cases they say actually, no, but they have their talents and capacities, not only to take care of themselves, but also to to take care of other women around. It's very, it's very powerful to see like that when, like they them them themselves to recognize you have the power to do actually anything that you want. And if you also work together with others and to that help you to recognize your own capacities, then they can see. Yeah, like in one conversation, a friend said to this one uh, a woman, um, Ukrainian refugee, she said, look, you are the same person you were in Ukraine. Because yes. you know this quote, regard a man as a mind full of gems of inestimable value. Yes. This, there's this capacities nobody can take from you. Mm. Yes. No, no matter where you are. You just have to also learn to, yeah, to know that like the empowerment is not something that like an NGO gives you, yes. no? like they give you yes. power. Like you have this power inside and also working together with other people, this power is multiplying. Hmm. Actually, I was also just thinking while we've come a long way, there's a lot of questions that we mm -hmm. have, you know, yeah. like... So we have, uh, like, what we are seeing now and we are trying to learn about, there are young girls who get educated and um, they're empowered now. They have a vision for life. But then when it comes to decisions related to marriage, um, you know, the family has a big role in India. Uh, to play. So what we're learning about is how do you assist now a girl? What is the path after that? How do they continue to, to grow as they did up until marriage? Because there are times when, you know, <clears throat> these young girls, they begin to get educated. They begin to think about their village. They're empowered. They go and talk to families as opposed to only being at home. They also do housework. They also help their family. But once they get married, then talking to the family of where they're getting married, what is, mm. what is their understanding about this, this vision of service to one's community and bringing about transformation and allowing and them the to grow. And the role that they can play not exactly. only in the household but also in society. And allowing yes. them to grow. It's like this bird, you know, like many times we talk about this and it's like this bird that you've just has begun to fly. And if you don't allow it to continue to fly, then again, they're just going to be in this cage. Mm. And I don't think we have, like, I think we've begun to see some glimpses of how many girls, when they go back, when they get married, they're able to share with their, mm -hmm. their families of, mm -hmm. you know, their in-laws about mm -hmm. 
what they're doing in terms, especially I think education has a great impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And many families have begun to appreciate, mm -hmm. but I think we have a long way to go mm -hmm. in terms of like, what is the path that, that takes place after marriage? And I think another question, which I think you raised at the beginning, what is the role of men, I mm -hmm. think, in, in, Assisting this process. in creating an environment which allows women to flourish also. Maybe I can add one more question to that, just related to that. Not just the men, but maybe thinking of the role of the institutions, the role of the community, hmm. because they're actually part of this. Hmm. So I wonder, of course, in that context, as we talk about the role of men, it might be also be very helpful to think of the role of the community. Which role does the community play and the institutions within this community? And the extended family, like, you know, when these young so we have like, I mean, maybe we can relate to it at this point, we're young mothers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the family support, when there's a mother who wants to be able to contribute to the community, mm -hmm. do things that say, for example, continue to serve as a teacher with children or even assist many communities to do that. How does the extended family and the family or the community come in and support and the husband and the husband <laughs> that's by default <laughs> that's part of us how do they they assist you in in taking care of your children which i i think like you know initially that's like your primary responsibility A lot of schools and kindergartens, the teachers are women. Yes, you know? yes. But in um, Training Institute, a lot of teachers and animators are also boys. And you see like young, uh, yes, like yes. boys who are like even 12, 13, they love to play with younger kids. Mm -hmm. But then somehow, kind of as they grow, they probably, I don't know who tells them that this is not for boys, no, this is only... <laughs> and then you see that, and then when you look at this, like if you see a, a 15 or 16 year old um, boy who is taking care of a group of children in his community, maybe it's younger siblings mm -hmm. or neighbors, mm -hmm. that actually you can see, oh, probably it's gonna make him a better father <laughs> that mm -hmm. is yes. gonna yes. be more present and allow the mother to do other things. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. It's very interesting, you know, with this empowerment of women, when women are actually empowered, how they become a very important instrument of uniting the entire village. village yes. So there is this example of one of the communities that, uh, you know, these women, they began actually meeting together and reflecting and thinking about their own village, thinking about the education of children in this village and how they would make their village better. But through such a gathering, which later on they began praying together, they thought that, you know, as a community, we have to think about our own community. And as a result of that, they began to think about environment and the kind of trees that they had planted around, which was kind of affecting the, the streams of water that were actually there. So they began to change and they began to think about their own diet and, and uh, maybe planting some of the trees that will supplement their diet in this particular community. But then they also noticed that there are particular local vegetables, kind of vegetables that were getting extinct. Mm. Mm. So they began to consult about it and to collect the seeds mm. of mm. this particular wow. vegetable. And at the level of the community, they began kind of a, a, a seed bank that mm. you know they would actually collect the seeds and put there. And as a result of the educational program that is offered in that particular community, they began to study some books. And these books enhance their knowledge of agriculture. And actually, if you go to this community now, everybody is thinking about everyone else. And it's not about me, but it's about our community, how we can make our community better. And in small ways, the agriculture has begun to transform. Actually, as a community, they are coming together and thinking about some of the young people in the community, like more lately, they began a kind of um, a community bank, you know? Mm. And in this community, everybody from within the community can contribute in that. And as a community, they sit together and discuss about the use of this money. 
So, for example, more lately, they managed to send some of uh, three young people in the community to go back to school. And some of the women uh, that were having community schools to go back and advance their studies. And actually, all this began with the women in this particular community. So Orlando, you have to share something now. <laughs> I was actually, maybe from Grand Canary, there must be something, it's not all equal there, right? Like. <laughs> While I was listening to you, really, I was uh, recognizing many of the signals of what you are sharing. No? Mm -hmm. Because we, I was always remembering one neighborhood in, in Canary Island mm. that uh, really we can see how it started, the process in the whole neighborhood started with, uh, with one woman mm -hmm. that she really get, uh, she fell in love of the, with the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And this is a neighborhood where the circumstances are um, of poverty, conflicts, a very difficult lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And for many years, the authorities also, they abandoned a bit this, this reality. But this woman was trying to figure it out, how I can assist this community, how I can contribute. But she was feeling a bit uh, fr frustrated no, in her mm. attempts. But one day she, she realized, I need to be with the people, I need to read reality, I need to find other women like me mm. that uh, are and share their concerns. And through this process of visiting, uh, put them in contact with uh, the institute uh, process with the training institute, uh, a process start to, to emerge. And they realize that actually there were a lot of uh, problems in, in the neighborhood uh, related to health. Mm -hmm. So many, many mothers and grandmothers also, because it's a neighborhood full of uh, young grandmothers, mm -hmm. uh, had health issues many health issues, mm. uh, some related to addiction. So to make the story short, um, they decided let's do some sport together. And that this is very strange in this community. Mm. They don't do anything together. They just say, let's do some sport. And they start with a group, a small group, and the group start growing and they start a conversation about identity. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, we are not only our body, we are taking care of our body, but we need also actually to nurture our soul. So they start combining sport and prayers. Mm. So suddenly, wow. many women in, in, in this place, they start like improving, like feeling better, talking better, because health this wise, is yes, health-wise wow. also. And uh, self-esteem start mm. to mm. Yeah. come yeah. back, no? start to, to be in yeah. that. And uh, what happened then is that they were always quiet at home, not very participative, but they start saying, oh, we can do things. No, we, we are able to improve our reality. Mm -hmm. And the group started becoming larger and larger, so 60, 80 women. From the, so it was like a revolution that the <laughs> authorities realized what is happening here. Why is a large group of women in this neighborhood doing a sport then? They sit down and they pray. What is this? In our city, this is <laughs> like very strange in, in Western said, you know, like, uh, why are they praying after doing a sport? So the, the mayor of the city was so interested that she arrived to them and she was... Um, a woman. A woman also, yes, the mayor. And she was um, saying, I'm going to support everything mm. you say. I will follow you. <laughs> so... They started to do, to make um, to become teachers of children, hmm. so they are fostering a process with hundred children oh, in, wow. in the neighborhood, and uh, so the story completely reversed. Mm. That's what, mm. what I what I what I mean. So they also have a lot of problems with uh, poverty, so they live with very limited resources. So the women start to empower, and they start a project, a social action project, and they are. Um, learning how to tailoring. to sign yeah. and to tailoring. Yeah. And they already are uh, 
creating a path of development when mm -hmm. they can create these clothes and sell it and have prosperity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they are also creating projects mm -hmm. like this to, to bring prosperity to their community. So the picture is completely changed in these neighborhoods through this uh, spirit of collaboration. And at the end, we saw resilience mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. no? We saw that from these, all these difficulties that they were facing in, uh, in the right environment, when this is, this is nurtured, they flourish mm -hmm. and they can become an inspiration. So it's not now a movement of women mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, Everyone are following them, them. All the yeah. families, yeah. the children. Yeah. Yeah. Now the husband, they're saying, oh, we need also to awake. <laughs> we, we also need, also need to, to be healthy. <laughs> to assist, no? So it's so beautiful to recognize signals from what you are saying in, in different, so, so very different societies and different realities, no? So it's like a team who's half players were not playing. <laughs> <laughs> now they're oh, they are playing yes. and they're winning. Yes. It's interesting. What do you hear? The need and the desire for empowerment still takes the form of the numbers. That empowerment and equality means 50 50. Hmm. Yeah. So it's still at that level, which for me, I think is a stage. Yeah. But fundamentally, I think uh, what we are starting seeing in these uh, communities where they are learning to apply these teachings of Bahá'u'lláh to better their social and material life is more at the heart of it, I think. And that is this appreciation of the conception of oneness of humanity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the word empowerment takes a new meaning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's not limited to division of chores. Or yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it also has a lot to do with opportunities that are created mm -hmm. um, for each member of the family to advance, mm -hmm. where, irrespective of gender. Mm -hmm. Gender, yes. And to be of service to others. Mm -hmm. yeah. To the community. Yeah, yeah, to the community as well. We actually really enjoyed the conversation yeah, also, I think. Good. It was just so <laughs> really like a conversation. <laughs> The many things that came up were new to all of us. Like all the stories were very yeah. inspiring. So it's, you interesting need to how the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how the reality is so different. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know when you talked yeah. about like a man sending, selling a home? I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> or like this 13 year old marriage. Just like, yeah. we're totally yeah. different, different, you know? Yeah. Like, but then the underlying problem is the same. It's, yeah, the same. it's just yeah. manifested it's in different degrees and different forms. Yeah. Yeah. And it shows how the world is one. Yeah. <laughs> and what is hurting somewhere else is the same thing on the yes, other end of the yes. world. And some of the things you shared is like more advanced than... <laughs> <you know? laughs> like, like what? Like, I don't know, that's just like this... this, uh, this consultation. Consultation and, yeah, yeah, and how yeah. like this... This really this what you say that they really improve the environment mm -hmm. and other things and like how it's very also tangible. It's mm. not just like, no, like you know, like ab ab a lot of things are like, it's not an abstract idea what I mean. It's like, it's a village, it's the community, they come, they do, and then it's like a pro that you see it's like, almost like you see, oh my God, I want to see this in my village. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But even our conversation for me is uh, um, a confirmation, the identity of the soul. Hmm. That's right. That the human being's true identity is the soul, regardless of the continent, the country, the color, hmm. and the gender. The aspirations hmm. are, you know, come from the soul, and this soul uh, has the 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 has one sauce. That's right. Yeah. You're listening to the Baha'i World News Service, reporting on major developments and endeavors of the global Baha'i community. For more information, visit news.baha'i.org.